Uh, talking about Nike and talking about trainers, this is an interesting development, right? And it really makes me L O L E L O L L O L L M A O in general. So, um, of course, most of you are aware how popular the Jordan ones have become in the last few years. Um, it's pretty nauseating to see the resale value and the fact that some of these shoes, you know, some of the more gener generic colorways are selling out instantly just because of the silhouette, right? It happens in sneaker it happens in sneaker culture. There's sometimes a model that captures the imagination of everybody. It just becomes the model that everyone kind of wants. I saw, I'd say it kind of started with the Hirachi. Um, then it kind of progressed into the Vans territory for a bit. You couldn't turn, you couldn't step um, anywhere in London without seeing somebody wearing some sort of variation of a Hirachi shoe. Then it was obviously the Vans skate high, skate lows for a while. And then of course it progressed into Air Maxes. And now it feels like we're heading into the Jordan Dunky territory. I don't really think the Dunk is a thing. I think Nike have just poured a lot of marketing bucks into making a Dunker situation. But I think day in i think for the average day person walking around day in day out i don't necessarily see them wearing dunks in all the time what i do see them wearing a lot of is the jordan one and um of course nike have sort of you know seen this and decided to capitalize and double down and just flood the market full of these and they look really really odd especially this one here at the moment so this is the 2021 air jordan retro of the 85 neutral gray the, I, i'm gonna say the jordan one that sort of set it off on instagram in terms of people buying up some of the ogs i'm sure you've seen a lot of those fashion influencers wearing a pair kind of you know discolored uppers cracked um you know collar section and shit just really really aged but they seem to hold up really well i'm not too sure why i'm not too sure if the sole is not made up of some sort of polyurethane composite which is definitely the things that my jordan fours and a few other shoes i've had they've sort of broken down because of that but some reason people have been able to get a pair from the 1980s um you know in places consignment stores in china i'm um, sorry consignment stores in japan and stuff and they've been able to hold up and of course when the news leaked that they were going to retro the neutral gray colorway everyone was pretty excited but now having seen the actual image of it i'm less so um if you know anything about nike you know they're retro jordan ones or retro jordans in general they vary wildly in terms of the levels of quality and finish that they have you know ascribed to them and it's really distressing too because they always tend to go for they always tend to fetch the highest retail price i guess of any nike shoe that exists for the most part um it's very rare you'd get a Jordan that's going to be under, I'd say, £120, maybe $130. It's very rare. They usually always go for that price and above. So for Nike to justify bringing out this Air Jordan 85, considering the amount of OGs that are available, considering the, no, considering the amount of OGs we've been exposed to on the timeline in general, right? We've seen some really great shapes. Right? Let me see if I can actually find one. I'm going to go in here quickly and get see if I can get up here. I can find Nike... Let's say Jordan 185 OG. Let's see if I can find a pair, but there should be loads available that people have actually purchased. Let me see if I can find it. There's an image of one there, kind of. Let's do vintage. Let's see if that comes up right in vintage. But I don't know how they can justify it. So yeah, there we go. That's probably the same shape, right? So this is from that's a that's like an eighty. What's that? An eighty-five original Bulls Jordan one, right? And then you've got this one here. But look at that. Yeah, look at just look at just a thumbnail on this alone, right? So this is from a video. Um, someone's got an uh, an, uh, an entire set of the metallic series, right? which is pretty impressive. So that's the entire set of the metallic series at Jordan 1s. And look at the shape difference between that and this. Let's move that along here a little bit. Look at the shape difference. The toe box especially. Like it's absolutely criminal that they're gonna actually put these out to market and have kids paying upwards between of, you know, 150 bucks for these, man. And they're absolutely horrendous shape-wise. Like look how flat that silhouette here is on the toe box and then you've got his unfortunate banana toe thing happening on the front with this massive lip now i know a lot of people online i've seen that do that there's some sort of iron trick you can do that can sort of flatten the front of this but it's not again that isn't acceptable i know back in the day when i used to buy shoes uh, to have you know a very very high level you know more than 100 or 200 pairs at the time of my height 
I remember back then the justification was that, oh, Nike don't have the tooling, right, to kind of make these shoes again and it costs too much money. Nike is a billion dollar in you know, a billion dollar company, right? More, you know, in the hundreds of billions, I'm assuming. They make, I don't know, must make easily a billion on the Jordan brand alone. You're telling me they can't invest in um, a tooling process that's allowed them to make the exact same shape that they made in 85 with the new brand new retros and just slap a higher retail price on them because I would gladly pay two hundred dollars two hundred pounds three hundred pounds for a pair of Jordan ones that look like this in a retro that are like a premium quality they have some great sort of pamphlets in there great box right amazing activation I'm sure a lot of sneakers would be more than happy to pay two hundred dollars plus two hundred pounds plus on a pair but to justify us paying that for this shoe that looks completely horrendous and look at the mid panel look at the panel here in the section just i need to swoosh how crinkly and all that is you already know the lever on that is looks absolutely subject and again this, this is just a sample it could just be the first run they're gonna maybe go with it again i'm happy they've got the sort of nylon uh, tongue there that's great but apart from that these look absolutely horrendous compared to the ogs and look how great these look just shape wise even just the back but let's look at the shape of the front just here compared to that toe box here there's nothing really you can compare to it. And again, meant to come out in 2021. So there's a lot of time for them to actually change it and make it look a bit better. But it's so disappointing to see that they're still kind of hustling us sneakheads out of our money and doing things like this. Like again, this is an original, right? Look at the toe difference between that and that. Look at it. Maybe they've got a bit of tissue stuck in the front of them. I'm not too sure. But the shape of these is, looks completely different to that. Like it's just not even the same night and day and again that's nike's fault for putting out not putting out but for allowing shoes to go out and get leaked like this and not their best condition they have to have a better way of kind of controlling where their samples go and who gets a hold of them but based on what i see so far again they didn't even bother because i would again wouldn't you pay easily pay 200 dollars, 300 dollars plus for a pair that's actually made to spec of the ogs with a discolored midsole with actually appropriate premium um, lever on the uppers, a great shape, some great additional items inside the box. I would gladly pay it, but look, the, the, the midsole hasn't even been discolored. So you're going to have kids, you know, teabagging their midsoles to make them look aged because they do them now at the moment, right? Kids actually age their shoes a bit. And it's just so abject. And again, it's such an easy win. There's no glue, all the glue stains here that you know and love from Jordan's. Like, ugh, I don't know how they could justify selling you a pair of shoes like that personally. And the box is obviously not going to be an OG too. But look at the shape, even just from that angle, how much better the OGs look to this image that we have here of the retros. And again, loads of time for them to get changed and edited. But from what I know and how I know they operate, they make such an easy, it's such an easy cash grab. The Jordan brand, they could put out complete nonsense and ball crap. As long as they have retro colors, the ways sneakers are going to be happy with them. But so far, seeing that shape and seeing what the actual OGs look like and having been exposed to them for the best part of what it feels like three or plus years on the timeline, people have been wearing a pair of these neutral gray Jordans, right? Now to be, to finally get them in a retro in that colorway or in that sort of makeup and that sort of finished product looks it's really, really disappointing, but it's a proper, proper letdown. But again, who knows? It could change. It could change. But I'm not optimistic in that one.